Hello again, friends. Thanks for joining me today. Pastor Dave here for our daily devotional. Hope you've had a good day today. We had a nice worship service this morning, and right afterwards we had a meal in the fellowship hall. I hope you were able to be there. If not, the service is still online. You can still watch it. We can't do anything about the meal, though. But today I want to go to 1 Peter 3. I've been thinking about how in our culture we have gotten to be more in conflict than ever before. We are more polarized than ever. You'd have to be living under a rock not to see that. So how as Christians do we live with that? It seems that as people have given up their belief in God, not only don't we agree on a lot of things, but we don't even have a common foundation of beliefs from which we can talk about issues. We have such different worldviews that we don't even speak the same language. And in fact, a lot of people have given up even trying to find the truth of any issue because they don't believe that truth even exists. They believe that everything just comes down to opinion. And if you don't believe in God, that makes sense. Because who's to decide between your opinion and my opinion? There's no higher being to, to tell you what the truth is. So a lot of people believe it doesn't even exist. And so when you can't agree on things, and you can't even talk about things, and you can't come to any kind of an understanding, what's left is just power. Who has the most power? Who can debate the best? Who can shout the other one down? How do we live as Christians in that world? How do we deal with the culture wars that are all around us? You know, if if you believe that there's a better way to live than just living for the pleasure of the moment, if it feels good, do it. If you think there's a better way to live than that, just that belief makes you the enemy of some people in this culture. They will see you as an enemy. Because I think there's a lot of people who are living lives that deep down inside they know they're hurting themselves, they're hurting others, they're using people, and deep down inside they know it's not right. And so they want constant validation and celebration of their life. And if they don't get it, then whoever won't give it to them, they will attack. How do we deal with that? I guess the answer I would look to is First Peter 3, where God has inspired Peter to write these words. Starting with verse 9. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary... Repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayers. That's the answer. How do you get out of this conflict state? Well, you don't engage in it. And, and that may sound like an easy answer, but it's not. Because when we're insulted, the human nature in us wants to insult back. There's something in us that looks for revenge whenever we're hurt. When we're hurt, we want to hurt the person who hurt us. When someone does evil to us, we want to do evil to them. <clears throat> but God calls us to something different than that. Instead of returning evil for evil or insult for insult, he says, repay evil with blessing, because to this you are called. How can we do that? Well, we can do that because we've got a God who's listening to us and watching out for us. And so, although others may see themselves as our enemies, we don't have to see them that way. We can realize that every person we see is a special creation made in the image of God and at least a potential child of God, someone whom God loves and has called to be in his family. And so even if they set themselves up against us, even if they insult us, we can return with blessing because we know it's not about us and we know that God can take care of us. I want to tell you, this is a better way to live. Instead of living your life Constantly looking out for the insults, constantly look, looking out for, 
for people who are ready to do evil. You're looking for ways to be a blessing to others. And that is a more peaceful way to live. That is a, a more joyful way to live. For all the talk about tolerance in our culture, there's a lot of people who won't tolerate anybody who expresses faith. But we can not only tolerate them, but we can love them. And there's nobody that's so far gone that God can't reach. And we have to pray for that and hope for that and know that it's possible. And who benefits from that? Well, obviously anybody that we bless benefits, but we bless it too. He goes on to quote from the Old Testament where he said, Whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. We're not going to take on the tactics of this world. They say you shouldn't wrestle a pig because you'll both get dirty and the pig likes it. <laughs> Just because someone insults you doesn't mean you have to insult them back. And you don't have to take the insult on yourself personally. You can realize that if somebody's acting like that, that is just one aspect of the brokenness in this world. They are broken. And we are too. And that's why we want to respond in kind. But if you have Christ in you, you've been redeemed from that brokenness. And although you may still struggle at times with it, you have a better way to live. Let's return blessing for evil. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for a better way. I pray, Lord, for this world. I pray for those who express such hatred when it's probably out of their brokenness and hurt that they're speaking. I pray that we would have compassion on those with whom we disagree, even if they don't see us as friends. I pray that we would know what it is to love them as you love them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, I love you all. Take care and have a good night, and we will see you tomorrow, Lord willing.